All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday, January 28th. We have just a five-game NBA slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do, when I go through each and every one of these games, I'm going to give you my lean on the spread. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays, like player props that we like within the game. But as always, all of my final plays, what I'm actually rolling with myself, those plays are going to be in the pinned comment updated throughout the day. So make sure to keep an eye on that pinned comment. In terms of last night, more green than red. So I guess that's the good news. The bad news is all the reds were three-point make numbers. Like if I just didn't go into yesterday thinking for whatever reason I was a three-point whisperer, we would have had a damn nice night. But uh, nonetheless, a 4-3-1 and one night. Our parlay for the uh, same game parlay for the Nuggets in the Sixers game. And B, it ends up not playing. So that's get that gets voided. But I. Uh, yeah, the Lakers game we had nailed to a peg. The Knicks, even the leans that I said in that game hit. But nonetheless, guys, again, we can't cry over a 4-3 and three night. But if I just didn't get all three-point happy, we would have had a way better night. In terms of a good night here, though, ride of the day cashes coming in from Edward. He had Colin Sexton um, over 18 points. Sexton gets the job done. The Sex Sexton has made so much money for us this season, which is awesome to see him kind of in the ride of the day spot here. But shout out to Edward, guys. If you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, all you have to do is use hashtag ride of the day in the comments. I'm jumping on board with one person's pick, giving you a shout out in the next video, win or loss. Uh, if you win, we can Keep riding with you so look forward to seeing edwards play in the comments today um if he doesn't get it in in a manageable time we jump on to someone else so that's why important to continue to uh that's why it is important to continue to drop your ride of the days but use that hashtag ride of the day in the comments let's see if edward can make it two in a row he said in his comment he's on five in a row streak right now but obviously it doesn't count at least for our books until it's official that you get the shout out but shout out to edward one more cha-ching for that call let's go ahead and jump into game number one on today's slate guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well you guys have been crazy I say that in every video but it's like the engagement and the response and the positive feedback even the negative feedback just gets more and more and more which uh, appreciate the hell out of everyone but hit that subscribe button hit that like button let's talk some pistons and thunder basketball so it's obviously not my favorite game on the site just because the pistons are involved um and there honestly is like a out of these five games, don't really love this slate altogether, but we're able to find some spots here. We'll have some plays here um, nonetheless. Uh, coming off of a loss yesterday, the Pistons are 118 to 104. Now, it was an early game, so uh, I guess you can look at that and say, well, it's not that bad of a back-to-back, -back, but this is an early game too. So if you're really looking at like the 24-hour period, they're essentially on a, uh, a normal back-to-back. -back. The Thunder coming off of a win against New Orleans, they blew out New Orleans a couple nights ago, uh, and I envision them being able to do that too the Pistons too, right? Uh, the spread is 13, totals at 239. This should be Thunder all the way. Like, I'm not going to be trusting the Pistons against them, so I'll lean towards the Thunder minus the points. In terms of a total, both these teams play with really fast pace, but if you'll notice, when the Thunder do blow teams out these games a lot of the times end up being low scoring because it's like that 139 to 77 game against the um against the Blazers or other games in the past like they actually seem to go and drop a decent amount of points but play defense and lock up so if I think that they win this game by you know 13 plus which we'll see if that becomes a final play it is still a big number even though there is such a talent discrepancy between these two teams I'm also going to look at the under here because I think the Thunder pull away the Pistons may kind of go whatever this is our season right like can give up a little bit um, and we actually look at a game that kind of finishes maybe in the late 220s early 230 so give me the under in this spot as well as the Thunder minus the points keep an eye on the pin comment see if those make its way uh, into the final plays again we're gonna be picky today because this is not the sexiest slate uh, of the year but uh, nonetheless no player props really that I'm looking at in this game either but let's go ahead and move on to the next game we got the Pacers taking on Memphis this number is massive Pacers minus nine is not something that I'm in love with but I really can't back Memphis now they do have three wins in a row so I'll give them credit they beat Toronto in Toronto then they beat Miami in Miami and then they beat Orlando a couple days ago uh, they were at home though and they were underdogs in all of those games that being said I just have a feeling like their time has kind of run out I don't see them rattling off four underdog wins in a row uh, the Pacers on the other hand are kind of doing a similar thing um, no Tyrese Halliburton he's ruled out for this game but even still I think you know having Pascal Siakam having Miles Turner, but, uh, Buddy Heald, Neesmith, and uh, Nemard is just still like a better comprised starting lineup than Memphis. So 
it's something that really doesn't tickle my fancy, but I'll look at uh, the Pacers here minus the nine points. If you're on Memphis plus nine and your rationale is it's just too many points, there you go. Like, I'm not going to argue that, right? If you're on Memphis because you think that they can win this game outright and you feel like they have an edge, that's where I'm kind of like, I'm not sure. Like, I get the three games in a row. I understand it. But uh, this should be and could be a game in which the Pacers, just because they play so fast, Memphis can't keep up. And Memphis already doesn't have the best guys out there playing, right? With all of the injuries, uh, Bain, Clark, Kennard, Rose, Marcus Smart, Ja. Like, it's crazy that all these guys that they invested futures into and that type of thing are all injured. It's tough. It's a bad spot for them, but uh, this Pacers team should be able to run on them to some degree. So again, if you're looking at Memphis and, and you like it because of the points and the value there, I guess I don't hate that argument and I could see it. Um, if you like Memphis because you like their team, go get your eyes checked. Um, but yeah, I don't think this becomes a final play because that number is uh, just a little bit too much to lay for the Pacers, but it's too little for me to get confident in with the Grizzlies. So kind of on the fence there, I'm going to lean towards a team that I believe still has better talent. Now, from a total perspective, I'm going to look at the over just like I just said, right? Like I think the Pacers can run this team out of the building and we kind of saw them since the trade almost have this sort of like, are they fast? Are they... Well, last two games here, 134 and 133 points scored. I think finally they're kind of hitting their stride. No Tyrese Halliburton, that's obviously going to hurt them, but maybe this Siakam trade uh, is going to start to click pretty soon because he's obviously a good player. He's kind of a type of player that they needed to in that position. Um, so maybe they score a lot of points. In this Memphis defense, I give them some credit just based on you know, what they've been doing uh, this year, allowing 113, uh, but in their last three, allowing just over 100 points. So the defense has been good on paper, but realistically, it's because of the pace of play. That's why they're a bottom 10 team in terms of pace of play. So their points per game allowed looks a lot better than that defense would actually allow if they're playing with some up-tempo pace. If the Pacers push the pace of play, I have a feeling this game gets uh, to be high scoring because of really what I just said. It's like, yes, the Grizzlies points allowed looks great on paper, but it's not really their points allowed. It's more or less the pace that they've been playing with. They're middle of the pack team when it comes to field goal percentage, three point percentage. They allow plenty of threes. Like it, it really is sort of a, 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 a hoax that they're playing good defense right now. Um, in terms of a player prop, so I like the over. In terms of a player prop, we don't have lines out. I see him on underdog fantasy right now, so maybe his lines will come out soon, but looking at... um. Aaron Neesmith, uh, his over and threes made. We'll see what that number comes out to. I don't really love it at two and a half. That's probably what it'll be. Um, I like it at one and a half, depending on the odds. So we'll see where that comes out to be. But uh, really one defensive weakness here uh, for the, the Grizzlies that I think that Indiana can expose is uh, the left corner three. And that is a great spot for Aaron Neesmith. He takes more left corner threes on that team than anyone um, in Memphis. Again, really weak in that vein. Another spot would be looking at the mid-range, which is Pascal Siakam's dream. So I could get behind some Pascal Siakam numbers too. Now, without Tyrese Halliburton, that line's going to be pretty high. It's at 22 and a half right now, but I really don't mind him to continue to be able to put up points. The one problem is I don't love uh, the matchup. He's probably going to get the Jaron Jackson. Unless Jaron Jackson Jr. says, I'll take Miles Turner, which, uh, you know, Pascal Siakam's a little bit more offensively dynamic. We'll see, but uh, if he gets the Santi Aldama matchup, I like Pascal Siakam's over in points as well because um, second weakness, I guess, to that left corner three for this Memphis defense is going to be mid-range that's Pascal Siakam's spot so uh yeah I like that over as well all right guys before we continue on with the slate I gotta talk to you about daily grind fantasy if you are not on this app yet you are really missing out and I say that about all the apps that I push right but this one it's particularly true about in fact all the ones I say it's true but this is a great app if you're on prize picks underdog parlay play you know sleeper thrive any of those apps out there guys this is something that you should have in your back pocket 1 million percent what it does is it compares prize picks lines or any of those other apps that we talked about to the lines that sports books are offering so you know the value that you have going into prize picks because sports books will set their line and use odds based on how likely they think the outcome is right a plus money play is less likely a big heavy favorite minus money is more likely prize picks doesn't care about odds so why wouldn't you be putting some high odds plays into your prize pick slips if sports books are already determining they think those are going to be more likely to hit right and here's a good example of why this is a great tool as well so Jalen Duran rebounds on um 
Price picks right now is at 11 and a half. You can see FanDuel actually has it at 12 and a half. So you can even see line discrepancies as well as the odds. Caesars has that same line, 11 and a half, at minus 157. So this has got a 54.8, uh, 18% chance to hit based on what DG's uh, algorithm and odds are saying. Guys, go check it out. You can get 25% off if you use the code GUYBOSTON. That's G U Y B O S T O N. Spelling Bee Champ, go check it out. That link's going to be in the pin comment. You can just go to Daily Grind Fantasy. Um, their website's dgfantasy.com and sign up using code GUYBOSS and get 25% off as well. But this is such a good app if you play Price Picks or Sleep or any of the DFS apps out there. This is almost a, a must-have in my opinion. You guys have seen me talk about it before. I'll continue to talk about it because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That thing ain't broke. And it keeps continuing to win people money. Go check it out. Link in the pinned comment. All right, let's go ahead and jump into... Hawks taking on the Raptors here. Hawks, big number to lay, six and a half here. They have not covered that line in, they haven't covered in eight of their last 10. They haven't covered it in six straight. Um, it's actually eight of their last nine too, which is crazy. But I understand why, like this is a Toronto team that has been struggling. Um, in terms of their last 10 here, they're two and eight straight up, four and six against the spread. They've lost four straight games. Some of these games though uh, are against teams that it's like, yeah, they, they played a red hot Knicks team, the Celtics, a red hot Utah. They played the Clippers. They played a, um, a Lakers team that kind of came for them in that game. It's like, they haven't had the easiest of schedules, um, which makes me at least give them a little bit of a break. Not really. Like, I can't give them a true break, uh, but I am going to look at them plus the six points here just due to the fact that it's the Hawks. Like, the Hawks have also been arguably just as bad um, on the year for sure. And then at home, this is a Hawks team that is 4-17 and 17 against the spread at home. At least the Raptors are 11-11 and 11 on the road this season, right? So uh, I just can't trust the Hawks to win by 7 points. That's really what it ultimately comes down to for me. Um, they hang uh, hung with uh, Dallas in that game, 148-143 to 143 was the final score, which that was no Trey Young either. I think he's back today. So that's kind of inspiring if you're a Hawks fan because it's like, oh, that's pretty good basketball. Like Dallas putting up that many points and you able to stick with them, I get it. It. But um, this is a Toronto team that, you know, has really had an offensive bug in terms of not being able to score. This could be a get right spot for them where Atlanta plays obviously virtually no defense, right? So maybe this is a spot in which Toronto says, all right, you know what? Let's freaking get something going here. Let's score some points. Uh, does Atlanta win? I wouldn't be surprised if they win by like three points or something like that. Six and a half is the number, and that's just a little bit too much for me to lay as uh, Atlanta. Total sitting at 239 and a half. If Toronto stays in this game, I know I just said that they're going to score more points than they have been. That's not really the biggest of benchmarks. I think I lean towards the under as well because uh, I could see this game finishing, I don't know, maybe around like a, a uh, I guess you could say like one... Call it like a 116 to 120 to 116 type of a game, right? Where, yeah, that's way more points than Toronto has been scoring. Maybe they still ultimately lose the game if they're on the 116 side, but that game finishes at 236, right? Under that 239 and a half slash 240 number. So I'll lean towards the under here as well. In terms of player props, I dug into this game. Nothing. Like, I mean, nothing jumps off the page to the point where I'm probably not going to even continue to dig into this uh, as we go through. Uh, now, not all player props are available at the time of recording, so maybe that's fair. But yeah, nothing really jumps off the page to me. Um, in terms of defensive weaknesses, uh, Atlanta rebounds and assists to point guards. Uh, absolutely let up plenty of those, but it's like, I don't think that we're going to really look at uh, Dennis Schroeder's lines or like... I just not really loving uh, what we're getting from that side of things. Also, another thing to note, uh, no quickly for Toronto, right? That's a big hit. Uh, Pirtle is a game time decision. If he plays, that's going to help them out. Um, but nonetheless, I still think that it's just too many points to lay as Atlanta. This probably stays as a lean, but give me Toronto plus the points. The under, I may like more than, than the side in this game. And again, just no player props that I love. Next up, we have Orlando taking on the Suns. This is probably one of my more, you know, I guess, favorite uh, spread spots tonight, which maybe it's a trap because I think the number is a little bit too low. But give me the Suns here, minus the two points over Orlando. Uh, they do have a couple injuries that we're waiting on. Bradley Beal is questionable. So is Yusuf Nurkic. Both of those would be pretty big, um, you know, to, to miss. But nonetheless, I still like them in this spot. Uh, they lost against Indiana a couple nights ago. They burned us. We were on the wrong side of that one. Uh, but prior to that, they had won plenty of games. They had won 
seven games in a row, playing good basketball, and Orlando really is not in the best of places right now, and I don't like this spot for them. So both these teams have a look-ahead spot, okay? Uh, so that's kind of equal. Tomorrow night, um, the Suns go ahead and play Miami in Miami, but they're already in Florida, and then Orlando actually packs up and goes to Dallas to play them tomorrow night. So this is the last game of a homestand. Actually, it's not even a homestand. It's like a one-and-done home game for Orlando. Then they pack up right away and go to Dallas. So if you're going to weigh those two, the spot is way better for the Suns. They're already there. They have to roll in tomorrow and play basketball against a team in-state, whereas Orlando is traveling. They might just kind of sleepwalk through this game. So I like that spot for the Suns. I think they obviously have some more talent on their team. Uh, I hope Beal and, and Yusuf Nurkic are good to go just because uh, if we're, we're betting the Suns, I want all their talent uh, kind of on the court. Uh, Nurkic, I believe, left last game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that's kind of tough. Bradley Beal's dealing with like a nose injury. So I don't really, unless it's like a bad like orbital fracture or something, uh, I do hope that he, he gets the go. So give me the Suns here minus the points. And if the Suns win this game, I do think that they kind of cook offensively. Uh, that's kind of how they've been playing. You know, 115 as a floor for them. Uh, I'll take that because I do think that this Orlando defense is a decent defense um, and a pretty good defense. But how dynamic Phoenix is, they should be able to kind of, uh, you know, pick their spots against them. So I think that if if the Phoenix Suns are going to win this game and control the pace, uh, they are a way faster team, uh, shocker, than Orlando. Orlando, the slowest team in the last 30, uh, in the last 10 games, they're ranked 30th when it comes to pace. But I think the Magic, and the Magic, excuse me, the Suns are going to be the team that kind of picks it up, right, and and causes them to, to play a little bit faster. So uh, I'm trusting the Suns to carry the weight and carry the water in this spot give me the over as well in terms of how Orlando's been playing defensively too like they've had a couple games where it's like whoa like Philly dropped 126 on them Cleveland dropped 127 on them or 124 something like that I might have those flipped actually but you know the Sun should be able to go in there and score 115 at least and that's at at least like a floor so I like that spot so we might even look at the Suns team total uh over as well if we can get a good number there uh as well in terms of player props I like Devin Booker's matchup in this spot um He's a guy that's going to score a lot in the paint and from kind of that short mid-range. Uh, so I like his spots, but he just dropped 62, and I think he had a huge game the night before that as well. So it's like his line's going to be juiced. Like it's probably going to be 31 and a half. I don't even have it um, available to me as of right now. So it's like... All right, I get it, but I can't I can't really get behind uh, Devin Booker to go and score 32 points just to cover for us, right? If it was 27 and a half, 28 and a half, whatever, maybe he goes for 30, but uh, I like the matchup the most for him, but I'm not going to be able to get behind that line. All right, we got Portland taking on the Bulls as our final game. Like I said, guys, not the sexiest slate at all, but we managed to find a couple spots in this game that we also like. The spread I'm kind of foregoing, I don't really love it um, because I don't think the Bulls, you know, guaranteed on the road here win by seven plus, uh, but you're not going to catch me putting my bread on the Portland Trailblazers, right? Like that seems a little sketchy to me just based on how they've uh, been playing. And, and I guess you could say the same thing with the Bulls. Like, I'm not going to lay seven points uh, with the Bulls either. So kind of staying away from the staying away from the spread, I guess. Um, in terms of a total, though, I really do like the over in this spot. Like, this has been a Portland defense that has not been playing all that great. Now, Chicago, on the other hand, does their offense have the, the, the pep in their step? Well, if you look at recent games, yes, 125, 113, 132. Let's hope we get that Chicago because that should easily break this 218 number, right? Um, if you look at what they did, you know, you kind of make the sample size bigger. There's some games in there like when they drop 130 against Golden State, 122 against San Antonio, 124 against uh, Houston, but they also scored 104 against Charlotte, 91 against Cleveland, right? Like there's games in here that it's like, I hope we don't get one of those games. But from outside looking in here, enough high scoring games as of late against somewhat, you know, capable defenses that I don't mind taking the over 218. And kind of along with that, a player prop that I like and a guy that I like to lead the charge tonight is going to be DeMar DeRozan over 23 and a half or 24 and a half uh, points. This is a Portland team that, you know, covers the perimeter really well. Uh, they don't cover the paint well, but I'm not really looking for the paint all that crazily because this isn't a Chicago team that scores at the rim very well. So uh, where I'm looking at and sort of the, I guess, the biggest offense to defense discrepancy is how bad Portland is against mid-range. On the season, 
um, actually within the last 10 games, excuse me, uh, they're allowing 54% field goal percentage from the mid range. That is very, very high. Uh, and Chicago and more importantly, DeMar DeRozan loves the mid range, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take a peek at him. He leads the team in mid range shots per game by a mile, six field goal attempts per game over his last five shooting just under 45%. So I like his spot. I like him to be able to get to his spots tonight and be able to go ahead and, um, um, I guess just put up 25 points what we're looking at right and also sort of a little I'm not not expecting him to make two or you know really bet on this because his line is point, uh, five and it's really juiced over one and a half is for plus 250 so maybe this is a sprinkle I'm not expecting it but it could be a sprinkle because plus 250 for him to make two threes tonight could be because it's also a team in which uh, well the only place he makes threes from is the corner it's because it's shorter right because he's not a very good shooter Portland struggles with those corner threes again the lean that I'm talking about here is DeMar's points because of the mid-range, but you want to get dicey. You want to get, you know, you don't want to get crazy on him. Plus 250 to make two threes? Maybe. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you made it this far into the video, let's see a 20 in the comments. Two, zero. Let me know you made it this far into the video. And uh, yeah, I know I've closed every video in the last like, two weeks saying thank you but if you guys have been here and rocked with me for a while you see sort of the climb that we're on now ever since we hit 50k things have been even uh you know skyrocketing and it sucks to not be able to respond to every comment i do read every comment and i give it a heart and and try and you know let you at least know that you know i'm seeing your feedback and all that it's good stuff uh but you know as we grow the individual comments stuff is going to get harder, but we're here for it. You know, it's, it's a bad problem to have, right? So appreciate everyone's support and everything like that as of late. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.